Welcome back to the Forts Pro League, where here we have on the left-hand side, it is Team Danke Merkel playing as the blue team. They're facing off against their opponents in red. It is Team Spec Fanatiker. Now, things are already looking interesting in this match as Team Blue, Team Danke Merkel, they're going for the Phantom Commander. The Phantom Commander, known for dirty, filthy cheese, uh, has some special abilities that make it unique. Specifically, its ability to, uh, well, hide its entire fort, making itself completely invisible so the opponents can't see what's happening during the, during the Phantom Commander active, and more importantly, the ability to move weapons around. That means players can build their weapons and cool toys back behind, or even out of sight in any way, and then move them to a forward location for use, most commonly during the Commander active as we have the sniping has begun as here on the right hand team in the red spec fanatiker is <laughs> they they saw the exposed mine and they're going nuts with it but they are playing as the armordillo commander armordillo now with bonus fast doors well they can have extra safe snipers that are behind doors which close almost instantly so just like that your snipers don't get counter sniped but more importantly the armordillo commander gives bonuses to armor specifically the metal pieces they cost less they weigh less it's generally a good economic commander which allows your team to tank extra hits they wouldn't normally be able to so we have what is going to be a strange tactic, at least I expect a strange wild strategy coming out of Finn and Abrulo, they're going to be facing up against opponents who just don't like to get cracked. So let's see how this goes down. As we already do see some madness coming out from Team Danke Merkel here. Specifically, Finn is building a cannon, a standard cannon, deep within their base. Now, this is something that can throw off their opponents because, hey, look, it's 3.30 on the clock right now. And, well, no one on Team Danke Merkel has placed any positions to build weaponry. That means Team Spec Fanatica here is less concerned than they would normally be, or at least they don't know what's going on, which in its own right is a significant manner of concerning, but there's nowhere on the blue team to place any of these cannons, any of these heavy weapons. So, of course, as red team, they're thinking, okay, why hasn't blue team placed any weapons? What's going on here? What are they doing? But what they're not expecting is heavy weapons to come out of nowhere. And that is what makes Phantom fun and exciting. Now, it is entirely possible that Red Team here understands that this is likely to be a Phantom play given the um, strangeness of the forts here out of P Team Duncan Merkel. But either way, I don't think Red Team Spec Fanatiker here is going to care at all. They're just going to build weapons and blow them, all, blow them all away because, you know, if your opponent's doing something strange, you just hit him with a cannon and end the game. That's usually how that goes. Uh, but here we have a cannon being moved. And... Firing. A heavy hit. The sniper follow-up. Is that enough? Oh, it would have been. That would have been enough had they, had they managed to land those sniper shots. But that is the joy of having tiny doors. Tiny doors means tiny hole. Tiny hole, hard to snipe. And just like that, the cannon is already moved away. Now, if you guys notice, these cannons are semi-transparent. That's because until a weapon is fired for the first time, the phantom weapons are completely cloaked there. Oh no, not like this. And just like that, Benzine goes down. I should point out, uh, the Benzine Prize for Gleitra from Team Spec Fanatica is playing under a different moniker. So if you notice, his in-game name is slightly different. But 
That is really rather unfortunate. The benzene had a hole directly to his core, and the cannon dropped in from above and got that perfect direct hit. Oh no. Benzene had so much firepower, had enough firepower to cause absolute catastrophe to their opponents. Um, I didn't see that one coming, and neither did they. So it looks like Team Danke Merkel is getting extra cheesy with it. They're bringing their cannons forward with the Magna Beam. We know how this is going to go down. Cannons from above and behind. A beautifully timed hit, wrapping around all those thick defenses for, for Naomi here. Completely bypassing it all and landing almost directly on the core, bringing it down to 84%, taking out critical technology along the way. Without the with the loss of Naomi's laser production facility, Naomi won't be constructing any heavy weapons anytime soon. That's gonna put Naomi in a particularly difficult spot. Now, I never I always say never count out a player who has a laser beam. These heavy lasers here incredibly effective at doing door snipes, which is what I can only imagine what Naomi wants to do if there were any doors on any of these weapon emplacements. Because, guess what? Your Phantom, weapons can go anywhere at any point in time. So while, yes, Donke Markel is largely keeping their weapons in safe-ish positions, they can at any point just put them anywhere else. And it's very hard to door snipe if you don't know where the, where the door is. So... This is interesting, because if you put your weapons out and exposed in places that are vulnerable, then they can be sniped at any point in time, but if you put them in the in the uh, expected positions, then door sniping becomes very real threat. So, there is an inherent risk with putting your weapons anywhere. But it looks like it looks like that game Oracle is gonna take the best of both worlds. Are they going to be removing the weapons from the door snipable positions and putting them deep behind the base where they are completely safe, and then only putting them in their pseudo vulnerable, semi vulnerable locations when they need to fire? That's uh, that's something. A little extra AP. I've never hurt anyone. Are those mortars? Those are mortars. Okay, he's going to be building a mortar nest, doing mortar things, because why not? As I believe it is past due time for Danke Miracle to do the, the combo again. Is Finn... What's going on here? They both have the energy to fire. I think they're just trying to break through the front. I think they understand that um, Naomi is now well prepared for such... such games. Yep, clean through. I'm sorry, they just hit the laser from underneath. Like, uh, what do you do here, is Naomi? Like, how do you... You have all this armor, and it's meaningless because they're bypassing it. And it's not even... Like, I can understand... I, I understand bypassing the... Um, bypassing everything and hitting from behind using the magna beam combo that's explicitly what it's meant for but that that hit with the laser beam from underneath taking out naomi's laser beam that's uh, uh, that hurts that's soul crushing is what that is as we have Duncan Merkel, well free to just lay on all the firepower they want and they want to add a significant amount Naomi did the good thing of predicting the uh, mortars with a whole host of machine guns. That's, uh... <laughs> oh, lord. It seems that Duncan Merkel is struggling to finish, finish off Naomi here, but... Man. It is getting harder and harder to see a path to victory here. So, Naomi is... Naomi does have a munitions plant constructed, which means Naomi actually can build and place howitzers which is a good start it is going to be a moment before 
that becomes a reality as uh, while Naomi does have the money for it, actually building a place, like a proper weapon location for it, is another matter entirely. As Naomi's base was originally designed for lasers and very well protected, except for, you know, the critical hits. Man, those mortars are not making it across at all. Just impressive. It's great MG positions. As it would seem, Team Duncan Merkel's lining up for another. Do you enjoy shots like these? Make sure to hit that subscribe button and hit that little bell so you too can get notifications and never miss a single series here in the Forts Pro League. And we're off to round two. The sides are swapped, but the players are the same. Here on the left-hand side, it is Team Spec Fanatiker. Facing off against their opponents in the red, Danke Merkel. Now, Danke Merkel here is playing as the Pinch Fist Commander. Tried and true and well-known, Finn and Umbrulo are looking to play something a bit hastier. With the Pinch Fist Commander and its ability to sell off everything for full price, they can cannibalize parts of their base and reclaim all of those starting materials and use it to bootstrap their economy, kickstart their technology, and get ahead just that much faster. Where their opponents, Spec Fanatic are here in the blue, Naomi and Benzine are looking to play as the Spook Commander. And Spook Commander is... I'm going to say particularly generic. While its special abilities are all cool and lets you see inside the enemy base and you get all this info about the enemy base and you get a readout and how much resources they have, that isn't like super important. The reality is at this level, the players are capable of doing their own scouting. Everyone's looking at each other's bases, getting these timings down. So they're looking at the clock. They know what's going on. They don't really need spook to help with that. Now, there is some benefit to gain from Spook, but the best strength of Spook is just in the resource acquisition. Frankly, the active ability, stealing some some metal and energy, it makes a difference. Like it removes energy from the enemy and gives it to you. It removes metal from the energy from the enemy and gives it to you. Like there's you can't you can't go wrong with that. It's great. It works partic it's it's amazing. And then also has a side effect of being able to scan the entire enemy's base. So if there's something you happen to miss, well, there it is. Plain invisible to you. As I'm kind of surprised that uh Kind of surprised that Naomi is hanging on to this EMP. We've seen the EMP start many, many times. But usually the EMP launcher goes away the moment the sniper comes out. It's more of a keep you honest kind of thing rather than I'm actually try to do damage kind of tool. And seeing it still exist, I, mean, I guess there's no real hastiness required to, to sell it off. It's just scary to see it there. It's like a temptation to use it while there's a sniper sitting there looking at it. As the EMP, extremely vulnerable to snipers. And, uh, looks like Dank and Merkel. Well, it's not cannon o'clock, it's only four on the timer, but they've got two 20 mils ready to go, about to be four 20 mils. And, uh, well, that's the power of Pinch Fist, as here comes pain and suffering in the form of many medium caliber projectiles. And there you have it, folks, the power of the hybrid weapons, the medium heavy weapons. Not heavy weapons, not harassment weapons, they exist to do just somewhere in between. They don't really break bases, they don't, they're too expensive to be spammable harassment weapons, but they are absolutely capable of dealing some serious damage if they are spammed in many, in many high quantities. And here we have four weapons all targeting the same spot, doing fairly significant damage. Now, of course, these are 20 specifically, so they're fairly widespread, uh, enough to break through the small defenses around the EMP. But what's this? It's a standard cannon. Standard cannon comes out, does some pretty high repair build. But if you notice, it really just doesn't hit quite as much splash damage, doesn't quite hit the same repair bill price as the uh, 20 mils. But hey, you know, the, t the 
standard cannon actually penetrates a lot more and has a better chance of hitting those super high value targets like let's say door snipes through weapons or just over penetrating and hitting technology or something of the sort. There you have it. There's the difference between the 20 mils and the standard cannon. The standard cannon's coming out of the cannon clock timing. Just blew through the doors entirely. You get two shots through the doors directly to the front, whereas four 20 mils didn't quite make the cut. A 20 mil is quite a lot of damage, but it's spread out. Even four of them, when tanked well, when facing a uh, high quality defense, isn't enough to actually end the game. Whereas two 20 mils take a base apart piece by piece. As Look at this! Ambrulo, completely out of money, can't even repair their own doors. That is how cannons tend to win games. Rather than deeply penetrating the base, they deal enough damage to critical components that they drain the opponent's economy to the point where the opponent cannot rebuild and simply gets put into a death spiral, where cannon round after cannon round beats them down until they completely fall apart. Now. Noticing Spec Fanatica here is not firing their cannons again. Uh, this is because Benzene is looking to save up for a third cannon rather than continually firing their cannons. Uh, as they were spook, they should have been aware that Ambrulo was completely out of cash. But it is entirely possible that they decided to uh, increase their firepower rather than keep up the pressure. Perfectly rational thing to do. Zembrulo is again completely out of monies. Team Duncan and Merkel still using that sniper to great effectiveness. Oh, so many 20s. <gasps> Poor Spec Fanatiker, Naomi not properly defending that fire beam. Ooh. Clean through the open door when in the door below the howitzer above the 20. That's what we call a lucky shot. We could not have predicted that if they wanted to. A brief lapse in defense integrity. Finn's mines damaged and destroyed but instantly rebuilt and protected. And there's the door snipe. The standard cannon cutting through the open door once again. Oof. That's a lot of 20 millimeter. Shredding off the front of Spec Fanatica's topmost base. Naomi is just the punching bag this time around, it would seem, but that's working out well for them, as despite Naomi taking hit after hit, Benzene is up to three cannons and has the economy to fire all three of them. There's two. Oh, did you knock off your own? Yes, yes you did. I was like, wait a minute, that projectile is going slower than it's po you hit yourself on the way out. Stop shooting yourself. Ambrulo has gone up to 320 mils. With 320 millimeter cannons, I mean... It's less damage than four 20mm cannons, and uh, they had four 20mm cannons at the start of the game, all hitting the same target, and that didn't break it. Uh, the difference now is that there's also a howitzer for red team, for team don't get Merkel at this point in time, so it's possible that they will manage to do enough damage to break Naomi here, but we're still talking about a lot of spread. Look at that. It's just not enough to break Naomi. Naomi holds after all those hits. Mind you, that is an incredibly expensive repair bill. But uh, the important innards, they're still intact. The technology is unscathed. The weapons weren't broken. It's a repair bill, but it's not going to set Naomi back longer than the basic repair cost of those materials. There's no requirement to rebuild a weapon. There's no requirement to rebuild an entire structure or doors. There's no it, internal damage to the core or anything of that sort. Okay. Uh, 
this is looking like it's getting rough. Those repair bills are becoming crippling. That's that's some serious debt Naomi's going to have to deal with this time around. Um, there's not enough eco in the world to maintain that kind of pressure. Naomi will not be able to take hits like that indefinitely. It's just, it's too much. There's too much firepower coming in for a single base economy to maintain. Oh, oh, oh. oh lord, they tried. That caused a, uh, a whole heaping mess. My 20s are so satisfying every time. Like, I don't... The benzene's going up to four cannons. Like, uh, do you have the energy production for this? That's, that's, yes, I think. But man, you gotta be firing those a little bit more often. You cannot let your opponents continue to sink their firepower like that. Swing and a miss. Specifically because they blew off their own doors once again. This is... With a dangle this big, if there's limited time before those cannons get knocked off. Just chopped off the top. And then it's uh, no more cannons for blue team here. And it gets real bad. Alright, Benzene. It's on you. You've got to protect your teammate here because your teammate's got an air-cooled core for a moment and they won't be able to stop it for long. Oh, ho, ho, ho. They really wanted it. They desperately wanted to make the meme shot to get it all going through to the same spot. They almost got it. That was close. But with that, Naomi falls, and Team Duncan Merkel changes their target. Oh. It's so close to Carl coming down. And there it goes. Team Spec Fanatica loses their final weapon. Down on players, down on economy. To Benzene. There's nothing left. Barely even the technology to rebuild. Ladies and gentlemen. I think this may be the end for Team Spec Fanatica here in this match. He's trying to get the upgrade, selling off internal components of their base just so they could get enough income to survive a little longer, but it's going to be quite some time before they can even get a weapon on the field, let alone fire back to deal any meaningful damage. And as we've seen, Team Duncan Merkel with its massive autocannon weaponry just shred the base piece by piece until there's nothing left. Oh, that was very close. How many buzz saws spec fanatiker at having no money left to even repair or rebuild in any way? That's it. The core is exposed. And there you have it. And with that, Team Duncan Merkel takes the victory here. With the memes and the auto cannons. Duncan Merkel wins 2-0 over their opponent, Spec Fanatic. Remember, if you guys like this kind of content, you want to see more memes, more dreams, and more heavy auto cannons, make sure to hit that subscribe button. And for now, I'll see you guys later.